It is Tottenham against West Ham, obviously. It is a London derby. Like Tim said, it's time to burst those bubbles. It's time to hammer those hammers. And we have to get a win in this game, people. It's like a game, though, like you never know what's going to throw up Tottenham West Ham. Whether in West Ham are in terrible form, Tottenham are in terrible form. It's literally just, you can't, I, I, I really believe this in Tottenham West Ham, you can't take form into account. It's not like Arsenal, uh, when, when Spurs play Arsenal. When Spurs play West Ham, literally, it's the old cliche, all form just goes out the window. Yeah, I mean, happens all the time. We remember when we were, you know, challenging Chelsea for the title, West Ham like, battling relegation. We played them in the London Stadium, end up losing 1 0. Like, it happens so often against this uh, West Ham team where you come into it so excited. You come into it like, um, you come into it thinking, you know, you're definitely going to win and they, they turn up. And also, it's not just that, just this game specifically, you know, they're a new team with a new manager. They've been very inconsistent this season. So you don't quite know what West Ham are going to show up in, in, in this game. Um, and because because they've been inconsistent, because they've got a new approach, you know, you they might click, they might not click. It's, it's difficult to know uh, how where they're going to turn up. So... West Ham's always a, it's always um, a difficult game. They're always, uh, you know, up for it. But, you know, the way we're playing this season, for me, you've just got to back ourselves. And I feel like if we play our game, we should, t- we should have too much for them. Yeah, it's kind of those games, though, like, whenever you're really confident going to a Spurs-West Ham game, <laughs> it always throws it up in your face. But then when you go into it a bit apprehensive, that's when we actually get the wins and start um, um, getting some really good performances and results against them. But... Both teams, you know, not in terms of results, not going into on the best of uh, forms, are we? Um, only two points separates the two sides, which is shocking, really, because West Ham's form coming into it, everyone's been saying, oh, they're not clicking this, they're, they're not doing too well under Lopetegui. But it's literally only two points. So if they win, they do go above us if you bring up the form. Yeah, but it's only eight games. I never really look at the table after eight games or seven games. But look, the form is... On our side, you can see they have four wins and a loss, so it's not that bad. They've only got one win in their last five. So, I mean, in all competitions anyway, a bit of a difference. You can see we're scoring a lot more goals than them, conceding a lot more goals. Um, their away form, one win in five. Our home form, three wins in five, although there's been two losses. So, I would say I think we're playing better, in my opinion, from what I've seen from both teams. Yes, the results maybe are closer than they should be, given the performances. But I do think we're in better form. West Ham obviously got a big win against Ipswich. Fair play to him. It was an impressive win. They battered them 4-1. Albeit, I think a lot of their goals came in a, you know, a bit a uh, quick spell where they just absolutely blitzed Ipswich. Other than that, they have flattered to deceive. They did get a good win away at Palace, but Palace are a team who have yet to win a game this season. Mm. Other than that, I saw them against Chelsea, really struggled in that game. They got absolutely a bit, a bit destroyed, to be honest, um, by Chelsea in that one, especially in the transition. When they played at home to Man City, um, they obviously uh, lost quite comfortably in that one as well. I thought they weren't really in the game there. When they lost to Villa at home in the first day of the season, um, they were probably in that game but probably deserved to lose in the end because in that first half, they could have been two or three down and they were lucky only to be one nil down. Then they got back in the game with a dodgy penalty. So again, they've been guilty of just being a bit too passive, I feel, in some mm. of these games and allowing the opposition, a bit, especially when they play better teams, a bit too much control. But have they learned from those mistakes? Are they you know, learning how Lopetegui wants to play? That's the fear. That's the worry when you come into these games where... You know, you've what you've seen not, is not necessarily what you're going to get in 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 this game. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I'd kind of agree with that. I feel like I feel like the form of the both sides have been a bit kind of deceptive. I mean, Tottenham's form has been deceptive because we haven't got the results that we've deserved in the most part of our season. <clears throat> I would say the only game we've actually deserved to lose this season is the Brighton game. Out of that, I don't think we've deserved to lose any of the other games that we've lost. West Ham, on the other hand, I think they have deserved to probably probably lose the majority of games that they have lost this season. Yeah, and I think that's a big difference. Um, so we know West Ham. You know, we were before the season. We were both absolutely waxing lyrical about their business that they've done. And you look at their team; they do have a very good team. You can't deny that. There's got a lot of players. There's players probably we were taking our team that they have. You know, the likes of Bowen. Kudus, Pakita, you know, Todibo, centre-back, some really, really top players, to be honest. Top six players, you could argue, a lot of these players they have. So once it does start to click for them, they're going to be a very dangerous team and they're going to be very difficult to play against. The, 
the problem for them at the moment is hasn't started to click yet under Lopetegui. They haven't really got going, but their last game was a 4-1 win at home. So is there evidence or signs of them starting to click, starting to get in, get to grips with Lopetegui? Maybe there is. So that's the worry if you're Ange or, or, or if you're a Spurs fan going into this game that we're playing them just at the time they're starting to click. But we'll have to wait and see because Ipswich are Ipswich. They're not, they're not Chelsea or, or Villa or, or um, City who are the top teams. And hopefully, you know, you'd argue we're closer to them than we are to Ipswich. So we'll have to wait and see how they, how they fare. Yeah, I mean, look, to be fair, no disrespect to Ipswich. They've been fairly impressive for what they are this season. You expect West Ham to beat Ipswich at home. I mean, but they did it in a very convincing manner, let's be real. Um, if you look at the head-to-head -head of Tottenham West Ham, it just shows you how up and down this fixture is. Only two wins in our last five games, two draws and one defeat. So actually, um, only one defeat in our last five games. Not too bad, is it? Yeah. Um, obviously, the defeat and last the defeat year. we should have won. Yeah, the defeat last year, really disappointing game. We were 1-0 up, cruising at half-time and, you know, should have put the game to bed and then second half we capitulated you know two bad mistakes and never really got back in the game and it was just one of those games where it was it was in that run just after the Chelsea game when we had a string of injuries I think yeah. we were probably playing Davis as centre back we probably had no Madison Lo Celso up front um, you know very mix and match team and Brennan on the left Kulu on the right yeah just a different dynamic to what we have now <coughs> so hopefully if we have the same level of dominance this, this season as we did last season it could be a different game however you know they're a different team as well different manager yeah better players um, so you, it's hard to really take too many lessons from last season because it could be very different Will be I think a lot of their most of their players are probably going to be the same it's just going to be really Todibo and Kilman. well they're going to have only one of their back four will be remaining. Wan Bissaka's in there. Because Wan Bissaka, Zuma, and Agard played mm. last year. So they're going to have a, a brand new centre back pairing, a new right back. Um, Suchek and Ward Prowse probably won't be starting. Um, uh, so it is a fairly well, Suchek's team. played a lot, but Ward Prowse obviously left. Yeah. Um, yeah, then Bowen, Kudus, Antonio. They didn't play last year, I'm guessing. Antonio didn't play. It was Kudus up top. Kudus up top. I'm probably going to assume it's Antonio this time around, albeit. There's been a bit of, um, uh, you know, disagreement with uh, Kudus and the manager so far this season, it seems, where Kudus has been out on the left and he hasn't been happy there. And apparently they had a big argument in one of the games at halftime where he got taken off. So, But then he responded by scoring a goal. He did. Um, but is he totally happy on the left-hand side? Is there going to be a change of position? If I was the manager, I would put Kudus up front and put some of it on the left. That's what I would do. Uh, I think that's probably a better option. Um, but... You know, at the moment he's gone against that. And Antonio last game got three assists and a goal, didn't he? So yeah. whether he's going to change it up, I don't know. In this game, could you argue, could you argue, Kudos on the left might be a, a really benefit to them because you know how we leave spaces, especially in wide areas. You know, Kudos running at Poro is, is a proposition where, as much as Poro's improved defensively, you know, Kudos in a one-on-one -on -one with Poro, do I back Poro to, to win that challenge every time? Probably not. Do I back Kudos to get some joy, at least in that in that situation? You know, we saw how Matoma got joy. So I wouldn't, you know, I think Kudos, you could argue at the moment, is one of the best dribblers in the league. So mm. he's definitely a big danger man for me in this one. In fact, I'm probably more worried about Kudos than I am about Bowen in a weird way because with Van der Ven and Udogi on that side, the physical and, and pacey attributes they have, even if Bowen is running in behind, I'd back Van der Ven and, and Adogi to deal with that more than I'd back Porro to deal with Kudus, in a mm. way. So that's definitely an area I'm a bit worried about. Yeah, it's true. And look, the quality that they do have um, is a testament to the scouting network at West Ham and, and how they've got these players through the door. I mean, to get Mohamed Kudus, who was sought after uh, loads of top clubs around Europe, we were saying, do you remember it was that international tournament we were in the World Cup, we were watching him play, we were like, let's get this guy at Spurs, he's brilliant. brilliant. Um, he had a stunning World Cup that year, and he ended up going to West Ham. Lucas Paquetar as well, uh, you know, he's been touted around for, for big clubs as well. So they've got some real, real top quality in that team now, mm -hmm. and it just gives a testament to say how strong this league actually is. You look at the top 10, top 11 clubs in this league, I mean, there's not really a bad team there, is there? No, and I think look, there's so much money in the Premier League. Um, there's everyone has got analysts, and everyone's looking at data, and everyone uh, has got recruitment teams, and like because there's you know billions and billions of pounds up for grabs here, so it's no surprise to me that the level of competition is really increased. And now you've got 
teams like West Ham with the level of players that they got that's why the, the league is so competitive uh, albeit Man City do usually end up winning but uh, I do think in terms of the general competitiveness um, especially the top half teams it's why teams are just taking points off each other constantly because everyone's got good players everyone's got good managers as well you look at all the managers up and down the league there's very few managers who um, who you look at and you think wow they're, they're not good or they're not you know they, ha- they haven't got good records and stuff like that they've, they've all all um, now got top managers in charge and looking to give them time as well. So, yeah, I think West Ham are clearly evidence of that. Mm. Um, we were speaking to Nicky, weren't we, uh, yesterday, talking about combined 11s and match previews. There's a few things that uh, he was saying, and he was saying that, you know, the fullbacks for, for West Ham play very high up the pitch. They start they're playing a higher line than they did last season. Do you feel that they will make maybe adjustments to combat what, what we're going to throw at them this weekend, or will they stick to their guns? Hard to say. I know Lopetegui is quite a um, adaptable manager, so he's more of a guy who might adapt to the situation to try and get the result rather than stick to his principles like Ange does. I know if they play their fullbacks high, I think that could spell a bit of problems for them because of how we play our wingers very high, very wide, um, like touchline wingers, and then we've got the inverted fullback. So if we're playing through the centre and they're playing their fullbacks high, there's just going to be too much space for Son and Johnson who are very good transitional threats to run into. Um, the problem we got there is they're not very... They're, they're players who prefer to ball in behind rather than ball to feet. So if, they're, if they do drop back a bit, then I see us struggling a bit more, you know, getting, getting in behind them when they're behind us. If they're stepping up a bit, I think we'll back ourselves to find that space in behind them, especially with Decky, who we can just put the ball into and he can break the press. Same with Madison as well. And even Bentancor, when he's on his game, can do that. Then you've got Solanke. It's like the players in the middle, at the moment, they're so strong and so good at holding the ball. It's difficult for opposition teams to combat that. When we go out wide, obviously Johnson and Son, very much transitional players, very much players who like the ball, much more running and spaced in behind. So it's going to be interesting to see if... um, if uh, Lopetegui changes that. I was looking at some of their previous games against, interestingly, when they played Chelsea, they, they moved to a back three, but it didn't work at all. They got absolutely battered. Um, and, you know, they were destroyed, really, by Chelsea on the transition. So I don't think he's going to go with that experiment again. But I think all, all I'm saying is that's evidence of Lopetegui trying new things to try, against opposition um, to try and get the results. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's got maybe a tactical... Um, a surprise up his sleeve for this one. Interesting. They played a back three of Kilman, Alvarez, and Mavropanos. Mm. Maybe that's why it didn't work. Yeah, maybe. Because <laughs> they do have Tadebo now, and, and I rate Tadebo so highly. Uh, we were speaking about him before I think we signed Van de Ven, and we were saying how you know he's probably our number one target that we should be going for. Yeah, uh, I think he would have been a brilliant option for us. Can cover the right and left centre back as well. So strong, but also brilliant on the ball. Very good with his passing, and that's one thing Solanke is going to make sure he's on top of because he's a really good player on the ball he's got a very good passing range so we know Solanke's a great presser and he's got to just make sure that Todibo's not getting too much time on the ball because if he does ball. you know with Bowen running in behind getting the ball to Kudus um, even direct to Antonio who can hold the ball up all of a sudden you can see West Ham getting a bit more joy so we've just got to make sure that Solanke's doing his job up front and hopefully just limiting Todibo as much mm. as possible and um, we need to clear up the uh, the combined 11 yesterday, man. That was a bit of a disgrace what we let happen happen on that screen yesterday. <laughs> it really was. Like, first of all, how the hell are we letting Emerson Palmieri get ahead of Destiny a doggy, first of all? That, that's a disgrace in itself. And second of all... Mickey gaslighted us yesterday. He absolutely <laughs> gaslighted us yesterday, coming on and saying Kudus has scored 18 goals and we didn't fact check him. 18 goals. He scored like eight goals last season. He got eight goals and six assists. God. Is, and he's trying to say that he was better than Son, who got 17 goals and 10 assists. Come on, Nicky. You're better than that. And, uh, and you're lucky we didn't fact check you live on the stream because that is poor form. Son is so clear of Kudus. I know Kudus is a great player, but Son is just different class. And... We, we, I think he's done it year in, year out. He's such a superior finisher in the final third as well. And as much as Kudus is brilliant, and maybe in a few years' time, you know, we might be saying he's a better player. But right now, it's Sonny's clear. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no question about it. 
Sonny is one of the legends of uh, the Premier League. That's how good he's been. He's been one of the best left wingers in the Premier League uh, for the past nine years since being at this football club. So to say Kudus, Kudus can't even uh, lace his boots. That's where Kudus is right now. And Kudus hasn't even had a good start to the season either. So One goal, I think, in his first seven games. One goal in his first seven games. And then they're trying to say he's better than Sonny. He's beefing the manager. Apparently he had to be held back. Apparently he had to, the, they had to be restrained from going out at Lopetegui at halftime against Brentford. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Absolutely Son would never. Ridiculous. Son would never. Never. He's got too much respect for that. Uh, for any manager. Mm. Um, maybe if you're not young Klinsman. <laughs> but um, look, like, obviously just desperate to get back to winning ways this weekend. Does it mean that that little bit more because it's against West Ham or do you not really care about West Ham too no, much? No, I don't think it means more because it's cause against West Ham for me in this specific game. Maybe in a different scenario it might, but in this game we need to get back to winning ways. we just got to treat it like another game. I, I don't see this game as like an Arsenal or even a Chelsea where it's a big London derby in terms of like where pride's at stake. Like, Yes, if we lose, it will be embarrassing, but it will be more embarrassing just because it's against West Ham, not because it's a derby, if you know what I mean. Mm. So, yes, I want to win. I want to win just like I win in any other game. But I don't think... I don't come away from this. Like, if we beat Arsenal, it's just a different case. You know, it, 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 it can make... That can make my... Um, make my week or it can you know it can make me very very happy for a lot longer but West Ham it's just a win and then you get over it kind of thing I don't, I don't see it as like a game which has much special meaning to me I agree I mean the only reason why it means a little bit more is because it just because it means so much to them yeah that's what it is it's like because you know they hate you so much so if you beat them they are literally just imagine remember how depressed we were after losing that North London derby that's how they're gonna feel yeah, after exactly. losing the weekend that's why it just means a little bit more just to just shut them up mm -hmm. um but in terms of like the way i actually feel about this fixture yeah it's just like any other fixture to me to be honest i mean i don't really care to uh, it's just it's just important to get back to winning ways that's all it is the only thing is the only reason i really don't want to lose is just because i know if we lose we're gonna get it <laughs> we're gonna get it from west Ham fans absolutely we always do so i kind of just want the team to do the job for me so we're not absolutely getting uh, a viral moment on um, social media but um <laughs> happens every reasons, year happens every year anyway. but um i think yeah for me i think it's so important that we just have a reaction to that brighton game it's, a, it's interesting if we, you know, if we win, all of a sudden the narrative goes from, you know, um, sloppy start to the season or poor start to all of a sudden it's what six wins in seven, uh, all of a sudden then you change the narrative. We lose. It's like if all of a sudden it's haven't learned the lessons from Brighton and all of a sudden you're looking at the league table, it might be bottom half, and then I have two changes in in another way. And obviously at this point of the season, because there's so few games um, that have gone, you know the league is so tight a win i think we could be sick for loss you could be as low as like 14 for something so you know there's all different narratives you can spin um with these results so i think it's just so important we get the job done more importantly we just have a consistent performance and we show we're back on track don't um think the game is one just because you tune it up and allow the opposition back to the game make sure you're we're doing the fundamentals and i think we'll be all right not to say that west ham are, don't have good players because they do and they're going to be a threat but I think the way we play our football and the way West Ham have approached these big games so far this season I just think if we play the way that we've been playing this season West Ham will find it hard to deal with us yeah they should do and it's just so important for me to that we have to show a reaction we have to show a reaction because that second half against Brighton was nothing short of disgrace that's the last we've seen of this team so it's so important that Particularly those four players who I felt that really let us down on the weekend, which was Udogi, Van der Ven, Romero and Bentancourt. I really want to see them play at the top of their game and, and show what it means to play for Tottenham Hotspur because I didn't see that in the second half against Brighton. They came out, they were lackadaisical, they were complacent. They need to come out and show it for 90 minutes and really stamp their authority in this game. And if they do that, I have, I have no question that we're going to win this game. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think it was just them. I think it was the whole team, to be honest. But I think, obviously, they're the ones in the back line, so they're going to get a lot of the culpability. But I think the whole team went missing in that second half, and that's what we got to get right. And I hope, the, you know, Ange has analysed what went wrong against Brighton and tried to find solutions. Because as much as we can blame the players, I do think there's a problem with how we have a drop-off in second half. And I don't think it's just because we think the game is won or we, we get complacent. I think there is a drop-off because of how intense we are. 
and we're always trying to be intense at every moment of the game and um, which we try to be the most intense team in the league essentially and that's a good thing because it gets us in situations where we should be two free up every game essentially and we we dominate but also means there are times in the second half where we do have a clear drop off and we do uh, have a lack of intensity and maybe that physicality as well leads to mental drop offs and leads to lack of concentration because when you're so physically intense that can lead to the mental side as well because that that takes a lot of, a lot of effort so i think Ange has to look at himself as much as he absolutely has to the players have to take responsibility and as well has to analyze why that keeps happening and is there something you can do differently to try and f um fix that problem because that is a problem at the moment and maybe you could argue yes we drop off for 10 15 minutes but as long as we're in a position every game where we're two free up that's fine because if we take if we if we can dominate and be two free up and then manage those times in the game when we do have a drop off then that's a good situation rather than not having those moments when we we could be too final up but if he could find a solution to that drop in intensity in the second half i mean that would be perfect it would be <laughs> perfect wouldn't it um and that'll take some flexibility from Andrew post to that a lot of people say he doesn't have uh do you think that narrative is fair i don't think it's fair i do think he's been flex he's not flexible in his principles which is absolutely right we want to be an intense team we want to be a high pressing team we want to dominate teams we want to be on the front foot we always want to look for more goals those are his principles now the way he goes about that the tactical setup how we press the pressing structure all those different things those are things i do think he's adjusted at times the positioning of players where he's paid players bring you know bringing decky into the middle all these different things he even said it. i was re listening to another interview from him today he was saying how talking about the decky in the middle but he was saying that's one aspect where we've found a different dimension but he's saying we're still exploring other formations he was saying and that's something we want to bring to this team we want to be a fluid team that can change up and change formations and I do think he's shown that at Tottenham to be honest since he's been here an ability to do to try different things and you know put Decky up front try you know put skip it left back he's trying little creative solutions I do think he's done that he's not been completely stubborn I do think he's a manager though who doesn't change things unless it's clearly broken so just because something doesn't work one week he doesn't just immediately change it he wants to give it a few games to see if it's a real problem or it's just something that happened one week and i think fans sometimes look at that and get frustrated and saying oh it didn't work well why are you doing the same thing it's not going to work I, you know i think he's he, he likes things to play out first before he completely changes things but i do think once it's once he knows it's not working he will change it and i think mm. he's shown that yeah and i think as well with the fullbacks this season he's seen you know, not getting Sonny in those in those right positions. I think it's really important to get Sonny in those positions this weekend. And I think even we've seen recently with Brennan, I think beginning of the season, uh, I don't know whether it's a Brennan thing or an Ange thing. Maybe it's Brennan learning the role a bit better. But I think at the beginning of the season, Brennan was very much just out on the right-hand side, very wide all mm. the time. And yeah, hugging that touchline. Yeah. And um you can see the goals he's been scoring a lot of them being in the box and pretty much all of them being in the box and uh, um he's getting a bit more central he's and he again i was watching that interview the interview and he's saying that you're talking about brennan saying that um you know at the beginning of the season um he was having his struggles but now you know how we want our wingers to be yes we want them wide but also when they have those opportunities to come a bit inside and be an inside forward we want them to do that as well we want them to get in goal scoring positions and that is something maybe the wingers in our system haven't quite um, when all up to up until recently, um, haven't guy got to grips with because they've been so far and wide for so much of the game. Sometimes they struggle to get in those positions where they're getting in the box. But you can clearly see with Brendan. I think you saw with Son in the Brentford game as well before he got injured. You know he was doing more of that as well. So maybe we're seeing evidence of a bit more for. Uh, of the wingers learning that role a bit more and getting into more goal-scoring positions. And I think it will just benefit both of those players because I think Brennan clearly showing he's got good finishing ability, so he'll thrive in those positions. And we definitely know Son will. So the more they get in those positions, um, as much as they can, is only going to benefit them as much as the team. Mm. Well... It's time to teach those South, uh, well, I was about to say South London, no, <laughs> those East London boys a lesson this weekend. We need to get them to crawl back to East London with their tails between their legs. It's going to be an intense, well, I say it's going to be an intense atmosphere, but I just hate 12.30 kickoffs. Yeah. 12.30 kickoffs are always the worst, aren't Everyone's they? Everyone's half asleep, yeah. pretty much. Everyone's still waking up. So 
I never think 12.30 uh, leads to a best a, a great atmosphere as well. Not People haven't had time to uh, get their drinks in, mostly. Uh, some people do, but uh, most people don't um, at that point. Um, so, yeah, I don't think the atmosphere... I don't envisage the atmosphere being unbelievable unless we, you know, take an early lead and maybe get the cr- crowd up early. But let's hope the, uh, the the team can wake us up a bit mm. uh, early doors. And we know how we like to fa- start fast. We've done that in the f- past few games. You know, early goal against um, Man United. We got, we've, we, I think we've got quite a few early goals this season so far. So I think Brentford we got, got even though we conceded early, I think we con- scored in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. Brighton, fairly fast start in that one as well. So we need to do the same and just make sure that once we get that advantage, we don't allow the game to drift like we did against Brighton. Yeah, not winning is not an option this weekend. We have to get those three points and kickstart uh, the season now. Uh, well, I say kickstart the season, but we have won six of our last seven games. So, uh, or five of our last six, whatever it is. So we have to get back on track after the Brighton game is what I'm trying to say. And West Ham is the perfect opportunity to do it. 12.30 kickoff on Saturday. Sim is going to be in the stadium. You'll probably hear him from, uh, from your TV screens, how loud he's going to be singing and obviously all the content that is going to be coming out from the stadium will all be coming from Sim. I will be in the studio with you with Amir this weekend. So no Barnaby, it is me and Amir on the watch along. So come and tune in, come and have your say after the game. I'm going for two under Spurs in a tightly contested encounter. Sim is going for a 4-1 drubbing of the Hammers. He is literally hammering the Hammers this weekend. 